the strongest and only Esper, doing nothing but training my psychokinesis, part 3. So, as long as you take your basic credits, you're free to do whatever you want at university. You can join a circle group, go around with friends, stay in the lab, or even easily make a lot of money with a part-time job. It was three times as fancy as I imagined it, so I decided to immerse myself in my hobby without any hesitation. In short, learning about DISP. I did psychokinesis training, vocal cult magazines, and I read books. I went to lectures of self-proclaimed experts. Sometimes I even directly meet them and talk with them about it. I saved money from my parting job and flew to various places. Mount Aso, Fuji Sea of Trees, the Guyana Highlands, the Tower of London, domestic and overseas. I thoroughly investigated various famous suicide places and power spots. But I got nothing. There were never any occult groups on campus in the first place. I went to a presentation of a self styled psychic while hiding my abilities, which was a good idea as it was extremely anticlimactic. In a dimly light room, they started with modern gibberish, and after spending a long time modern, they finally cried out the magic word, causing some water to change color. It's a magic trick, thank you very much. Even someone with not superpowers can see that. It's disappointing. There's not enough effort. I couldn't suppress my anger at how ridiculous it was, so I ended up losing control like and accidentally making the room a mess with my psychokinesis. I don't regret it, though. That part was fun. My first year at the university passed by Italy, although I was let down. I comforted myself by claiming that it was better for supernatural powers to be difficult to find, because then ordinary people wouldn't easily discover them. And while I didn't find any fellow espers, my training progressed almost too smoothly. See a water lifting, using density and precision to prevent water leaks, weight bearing output, support endurance, Maintaining the barrier formation, I needed to cultivate various psychokinetic techniques. I built a 50 meter measuring tool and made a cube that size full of water. The output was 125,000 tons. These results means I have no power to lift a medium sized tanker. That's scary. There's no doubt that if my psychic muscle was a real muscle, it would be monstrously macho. But in a fight, a tank would lose to a battleship. I was so preoccupied with superpowers that I almost repeated the year, but I managed to pass and enter my second year of college. That year, I decided to shrink my search from worldwide to just the city in my university was in. My output can no longer be measured by hand, and I gained all long precision and endurance by covering every individual grain of rice in a bowl in a thin barrier and maintaining as long as possible. It's the era of quick response now, at any time, in an instant. I must be able to use my psychokinesis perfectly. Currently, it takes 2 seconds for me to form a barrier. I want to reduce this to 0.2 seconds, which is the average reaction time of a human being. Furthermore, I want to be able to spontaneously support myself when I'm exercising. For example, my legs are crushed and I can walk, that sort of moment. If I have assistance from my psychokinesis, I could possibly jump or leap as if my legs weren't crushed. Specifically, it would be cool if I could jump for a dozens of meters like a superman and crush the concrete with a fist in the same way by using my psychokinesis to assist my movement. The chance to smash the concrete by diving your fist into it only occurs once in a lifetime. I decided to incorporate response time training into my everyday life. When I wake up in the morning, I throw the pebbles near my bed say up while I'm still laying down. I throw up a small barrier right before the pebbles hit my body. This continues for 5 minutes, during this I don't use my hands. The power and precision drops when I don't use my hands while using my psychokinesis, but it's too suspicious for me to move my hands more than I would on a normal everyday basis. It must be as easy as snapping an HB pencil, it must be a natural act. I'm awake once the pedal training is over, so I get breakfast. However, I do it all with psychokinesis. I use it to hold the frying pan, to control the stopped heat, to cut the vegetables, and I use it to fry. I cover the frying pan and dishes with a barrier so they don't get dirty. Pretty much all my appliances are electric and controlled through psychokinesis. I do use fire with my stopped dog. While walking around, I form a barrier under my feet that leaves me a few millimeters off the ground. It's not only to practice persistently forming it, 
but also to practice timing it. I need to form it right when my foot is about to hit the ground and then immediately release it once my foot lifts up. I came dangerously late to my first second year lecture because I spent too much time doing this practice. The first day I could walk about 300 meters per hour. It was really difficult and it took a few months until I was able to get back to normal walking speed. Because I was doing this on campus, my friends were worried that I had injured my foot. I felt bad about it, but I went along with it and pretended to have a foot injury. So that was probably overkill. It's not like there's a reason for me to be in a rush to train my powers anyway. Once I'm done attending my lectures for the day and I finish my all psychokinetic dinner, I continue my training by using my powers during studying, using them to browse my laptop and move my pencil. I use psychokinesis to assist with daily activities because it would be troubling to me if my abilities were too dull. Moderate psychic muscle training is indispensable. Once I finish studying around midnight, I put on the mask I got when I went to Bailey one time and go outside. It's hero time! Using psychokinetic muscle strengthening, I fly across the rooftops of the apartment buildings and hit to the sea using air walking. Once I get to the sea, I fly around it and lift sea water like it's an athletic event. I make sure that no one sees me. Also, if they do and rumors form, it's not like anyone will actually believe them. I'm even wearing a mask to hide my identity. It looks super suspicious though. Initially, I was asking myself, what on earth are you planning to fight? While training, six months of the same thing made it become nothing more than our simple routine. To further explain, flying around at midnight wearing a mask was caused by a relapse of my tune view, causing me to remember the pleasant feeling of being a protagonist. No, I really can't use psychokinesis, I probably can't just dismiss it as suffering a tune view relapse. Recently, all of my earnings from my part-time job have disappeared into steel toted work boots which can endurance a weight of 2 tons. Well, you see, an organization aiming at the experts with strong abilities may appear. So, this is a countermeasure against that? Except, there's no indication that such organization will ever appear. If an organization that has superpowers on the same level as me were to appear and we fought, it would probably be a monstrous battle with the Tokyo Sky Tree getting destroyed at the end of it. Although it calls my sanity into question, training to fight invisible enemies has become part of my daily routine, and I have had more time to go searching for friends. But searching by myself, I couldn't find anyone with the same abilities as me. There's no information broker to do underground research for me, so I guess mass media is the best option. However, I don't think my plan of having a real expert appear and call out other power users will be very effective. Up to now, various TV stations have created tons of different programs aimed to search for real power users, but none of them have been able to produce a convincing without a dub power user. I tried watching videos and DVDs of various programs, but 95% of it is fake and the remaining 5% is at the level of can be determined whether it's real or fake. Utilizing my vacation days, I flew nationwide and overseas. I tried to meet that remaining 5% of people. One person had a 5 year long waiting list to see them. One person was unfriendly, refused to show their abilities and finally angrily drove me out. The two prophets took money and gave nothing but vague predictions in return, and the remaining had undisclosed contacts. I realized it. I was forced to understand. I'm the only expert in the world. But there was no sense of wonder or disappointment. As I thought, it's that kind of feeling. Psychokinesis is a big thing, but because it had become too routine for me, it had, in my perception, become no big deal. I remember when I bought a video game for the first time in elementary school. At the time, I felt as if I got a legendary weapon. I was really happy. I bragged to my friends and before long we started playing a fighting game together. At the time when the best entertaining was manga, the game was a small initial comet that appeared in a boring everyday life. My psychokinesis had become like that. Three years after gaining it, I had become completely used to it. It's definitely interesting and fun, but like I do with my favorite game, I need a taste of a sequel. Otherwise, there's no excitement or expecting to do now. Everything becomes predictable. 
Maybe there won't be any other experts in the future. There's no secret organization aiming for my life. There's no filtering with a beautiful girl. There aren't any harmful side effects on my psychokinesis. I don't even know how I got my powers in the first place. Maybe in the end, my psychokinesis training will be just a commonplace and nothing eventful will happen. It seems pretty likely since I can easily imagine myself like that. But well, if you train to the utmost limits, it's not difficult to use your powers to cause a huge uproar. Perhaps the curtain opening of a fantasy like awakening experience is impossible and powers will never be understood in a practical level. But I'll continue training my psychokinesis, just in case. If you enjoyed this video, thank you very much.